now it's time for the only show that doesn't care about ratings, Witness Radio, with your host, Ryan Muniak. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Witness Radio, the only show that doesn't care about ratings because our sole purpose is to save souls. On purpose. Go to witnesstalkradio.org for more episodes and to leave feedback. Don't forget to like us on Facebook to be notified when a new show is available. Today, we're going to talk about major issues plaguing the world and asking people what caused these problems. Of course, to find the real answer, we need to start at the beginning. The beginning of the Bible, that is. The book of Genesis tells us that the problems in our world came about because of sin. In the beginning, God made everything, and he made it all perfect, and there was no problems. But humans decided to ruin everything by breaking God's rule. This caused a curse to come upon all creation. Isaiah 24, verses 5 and 6 says, The earth lies defiled under its inhabitants, for they have transgressed the laws, violated the statutes, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse devours the earth, and its inhabitants suffer for their guilt. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are scorched, and few men are left. Many people ask, if God is good, why do bad things happen? Well, here's your answer. It's our fault. Thankfully, God will provide a new earth without death, disease, or disasters. But you need to get right with God if you want to see that new earth. You're listening to Witness Radio. All right, here's a question. What do you think is the biggest problem facing the world today? Um, the biggest problem facing the world today, I would say, is acceptance between all diversity, diverse groups of people. That w- that's what I would say. It's just the different groups don't accept other groups of the world. Okay, and what do you think the solution is to that problem? Um, solution to that problem. Maybe uh, trying to uh, give other cultures awareness of the other cultures and their ideas and the, and you just try to make them more accepting, accepting of other people's ways of life. Okay. What do you think? Does that go into, like, religions as well? Do you think religion? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Uh, that's because that's one of the biggest problems is not being able to accept other people's religions. Like, uh, some religions are not accepting of any other religions at all. So if you could teach those religions to accept other religions, I think that would be a big step. All right. So, like, now Islam, they believe that... Um, Jesus is just a, a, a prophet, and they believe that they should kill other, you know, the, the Quran teaches that they should kill anyone who's not a Muslim. They mm-hmm. teach that they should convert. What would you have them do instead? Uh, what would I have the Islams do, you mean? What would I have the Islams? Um, How could they be more accepting? By not being so hard on their on the book, like on their ways and... By just being more accepting, like, how could they be more accepting? I, uh, by being able to accept other religions. That's well. The, I mean, but they would have to go against their own religion to do that, wouldn't they? Yeah, but I mean, religion change. You know, they like every religion. You know, they 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 all. They're it's not the same since it was when they started. They all all change, and they can all change. So I think that's just something that they, as a group, need to figure out and change. Well, I mean, Islam hasn't really changed, you know, since it's it's starting. It, they they believe in the Quran and yeah. they're unchanging in that. You know, would it be? Do you think it would be wrong for them to to you know, if they are going to be accepted by others, shouldn't people just accept the way they are? Yeah, they. I mean, people accept the way they are, but the problem is, is they don't accept other people. So they just want so other people think that they should accept other people if they're accepting them. But they're not. So I mean, that's that's a big problem. That's it's a tough answer. I'm just I'm just you know I'm just that's, I don't even major in anything like that. So I don't know what to, what about that. That's not something I've really thought about. All right, let me ask you a question. Uh, do you think that all religions are true? All religions are true. Yeah, sure. To other people, I don't think all religions are true to me, but to every to other people in the world, sure. Do you think it would be uh, fair to say that only one of the religions could be actually be true? 
Yeah, I think that's fair to say. I would say my religion is, is true. My religion. What is your religion? Christianity. Okay. So what do you think Christians believe is the biggest problem? Biggest problem of what? Of our religion? No, just in the world. I. Uh, what, what do Christians believe is the biggest problem? Violence. I don't. I don't know. I don't speak for the whole Christian community. I just. I speak for myself. All right. I am a Christian, and so in Christianity, if you look at the beginning of the Bible, it talks about what Adam and Eve. You know what happened in the beginning was sin, and so God separated Himself from us because of sin in the world, and then you know destruction and pain and suffering all came into the world because of sin. So. In the Christian world, where sin is the biggest problem, what do you think is the solution to that problem? Just try to uh, have your parents raise you the right ways, or just try to, you know, it's, it's, there's there's always going to be sin in the world, let's be honest. Uh, there's there's never going to be a perfect world, never, ever, no matter what. So sin's going to happen, there's no solution to it. That's how I say it. Okay, would you consider yourself to be a sinner? Yeah, I'm a sinner. I sin. But I also confess my sins. Okay, so if does confession of your sins fix the way you stand before God? Uh, I can't answer that. You know, I don't know the, how God sees things. I don't know. Those are questions that are all can't be answered. So I don't know. All right, how about if you stood before a judge and say, Judge, I'm so sorry. I'll never do those things again. You'd probably say, you should be sorry and you shouldn't do them again. But you have to pay the fine. Still get penalized, yeah. But uh, I hope that God's not seeing like that. I hope that he's more accepting, and uh, that's not how it goes. I don't know. Like I said, that's not, that's not something I can answer right now. Okay, well, what if you're standing in that courtroom, and someone you don't even know runs in and says, I love you so much, I'm going to pay that fine for you. Would that be good news? That'd be great news. That'd be great news. That's what Jesus did 2,000 years ago, is that God sent his son Jesus that lived a perfect life, yeah. never broke any of the laws, and he died on that cross to pay your fine. He He fixes the ultimate problem, which is sin, when he died on that cross. But he requires you to turn away from your sin and trust that he paid that fine in full. Does that make sense? That makes sense, yeah. Makes sense to me. I mean, I, I, like I said, though, this is a different world. This isn't 2,000 years ago, and this is just a much different thing. Uh, so, I mean, it makes sense, you know. But that's not, I don't know, that's not, that would never happen. No one would ever pay your fines or pay for your your sins and i mean like i said hopefully god is accepting of your sins and forgive you but in the real world no person is going to pay for your sins that is what god actually did is he sent us on well, jesus sent a person yeah he's, yeah he sent a person but that's two that that's all bibles i'm not i'm not going to get into that honestly i'm not going to get into that so you don't believe the bible is true i believe the bible is true i just uh i got different view i'm not a hard christian i don't believe everything in there is exactly with the way it was written so how do you believe any of it if you don't believe parts of it? That's just how I believe. I'm, I, I gotta go. We need to make sure that we trust God and His Word. The entire Bible. You can't just pick and choose the passages you like. When you disagree with the historical accounts and the doctrines that are taught in the Bible, you're basically calling God a liar. Right. We don't need no stupid ratings. You're listening to Witness Radio with Ryan Muriak. <coughs> but we like Ryan. <coughs> we do! Just go to witnesstalkradio.org. We've got this big disease going around called Ebola. Um, I'm not even sure what it does. I know it's killed some people and it all starts with a fever or something like that. So what are your thoughts on, on Ebola? Did, uh, what do you think the cause is? Um, I believe, I don't know much about Ebola too, like the main source of it or where it came from. But one thing in our society that is really not okay, like people are really undermining it and like joking about it a lot. Like I know like around campus, like if you cough, they'll be like, oh, stay away, you have Ebola. And I mean, it's funny in a sense. But it's not funny at the same time because although like we're not directly affected by it because it's not like technically on our campus, like but it is affecting other people in our society and other countries that don't have the means to like like Africa. I know it's in Africa and they don't have like the means to um, like take care of it as they would in America because they're an underdeveloped country. So that's yeah. What about you, Brittany? 
Um, I'm not sure from, about the origins or where Ebola exactly came from, but um, I feel like people are like joking about it or they'll hype it up way too much or not enough. So it's I don't think people completely understand the concept or like what Ebola really is. So you can't like understand if you don't understand it, you can't learn about it and and like effectively talk about it or let other people know about it. Um I also think that we need to like it's our responsibility as productive members of society to become more aware about it and become more educated about it so that like so that we have a world knowledge of it and actually know cuz I know uh, like myself I don't know what it is. I know it kills people and it spreads and it's not on University of Cincinnati and that's the extent extent of my knowledge on it. So me as a productive member of member of society I need to be educated on it, and I feel like other people should begin to, you know, find that education on it as well. Very interesting. Uh, so now, uh, I was asking you girls uh, what, you know, if you knew what the cause was or, or why Ebola is, is present in our society. Um, there are some that say that Ebola is caused by a curse. Now, do either of you believe that, or uh, what are your thoughts on uh, whether or not Ebola is a curse? Um, well, coming from a science background, I'm going to say that it's probably not a curse. So, I don't... <laughs> Uh-oh, Ebola. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I couldn't help myself. So, go ahead. It's okay. I'm also, um, I'm a health science major, and I, I don't think it's a curse. Um, of course, there's going to be those people who like think everything like you know the conspiracy theorists who just are like yeah um if you have a cough you're cursed and stuff like that i don't think it's a curse i don't, just like i don't think hiv is a curse or the flu is a curse it's a sickness just like anything else so mm. now uh when i was talking about uh people think it's a curse uh they don't think it's uh just ebola but they think it's the flu hiv aids cancer all disease is part of a curse, an ultimate curse upon the whole earth. And that, that belief comes from the Bible. Um, are either of you familiar with the Bible or have any type of religious background? Um, I'm non-denominational Christian, so yeah. Um, I'm not really any religion, so <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, let me, uh, let me give you real quick uh, what, what uh, the thought is behind that. Uh, in the beginning... Uh, before anything was around, there was God, and he created the heavens and the earth. He created all things, and he created uh, everything to be perfect and good. Uh, but um, after a little while, uh, he created man and woman, uh, Adam and Eve. I'm sure you all heard, you've all both heard the story. Uh, well, they sinned. They, they broke God's law. They broke his rule by eating of the forbidden fruit. And that, uh, the Bible says, that caused a curse upon the whole world, making it no longer perfect and bringing about death, disease, destruction, and Ebola. So what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that's true? Um, I personally don't think that it's true. I feel like, um, well, personally, like what I've learned from through my religion, um, that that perfection is like, like I don't consider sickness because they had sickness before, so I don't feel like that's a curse. It's just, it's just something that, like sickness. I feel like even, even before Adam and Eve, like I feel like it would be something that has an effect on human beings, just because of the way that we are, like built and everything. No, I thought you said you were a Christian, and I'm getting this this thought from from the Bible, which is the Christian. Uh, religious book christian manual and you know it says that there was no sin before the fall or before adam and eve broke god's rule uh you know it says that everything was perfect there was no death or disease or anything so why don't you agree with that um i feel like like before as in perfectness like before adam and eve i feel like like you said it this there was no sin before adam and eve i don't technically believe that like sickness is a sin or a way to punish us or anything like that. And what about you, Brittany? Um, I'm not really sure how I feel about that. Um, I'm not very religious, 
So, in that sense, I kind of agree with Jayla. I don't think sickness it would be a reason f to punish somebody. I don't think it's a punishment. Um, I mean, I feel like nobody's perfect. Nothing will ever be exactly perfect. Right, and and that's what happened yeah. when when they ate the fruit. Is uh, everything became not perfect. So now that now there's the sin and death and destruction and everything. Um, so you 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 say you don't believe that that's what caused all of that. Um, I don't know. Was it ever perfect? Like I don't I don't know. <laughs> I don't well, the Bible says that it was, um, and then because of the sin, the curse was placed upon the earth. So now. Uh, if that isn't the cause of death and destruction and diseases and all that, what is the cause? Why, why do we have death, destruction, and diseases? Um, it's just a part of life, I guess. Um, humans, um, with disease at least, there's bacteria, germs, like um, your DNA isn't always exactly right. I mean, anything can cause a disease, I feel like. Okay. And what about you, uh, Jayla? What, what, do, what would you say is the cause of, of all the bad things in the, in the world? Um, I feel like the ca there's a lot of causes of bad um, things in the world, but really, like, no matter, like, if you are relig like, religious or not religious, that there's a reason for the bad things that happen. Um, like in the Bible, well, my, my mom has taught me and what I've been going to church, like God's not going to put you through anything that you can't handle. So you can always take good things out of bad things. Um, a lot of times people don't, but because they don't see it in that perspective, but yeah. So I'm going to change topics one more time on you. Okay. And we're almost done. Uh, Ebola again. <laughs> Take a step back. No. Uh, so anyway, uh, Jayla, we'll start with you, and then we'll move to you, Brittany, okay? Do you girls consider yourselves to be good people? No. <laughs> um, I hope. I, I think that I am, but I hope I'm portraying that. But, I mean, everybody has flaws or does something that's not necessarily nice or good. So we've got a no and a yes. Uh Jayla, why do you say no? I say no because everybody defines good a good person um, as differently. So everybody's definition of a good person is different. So by my standards, I believe I'm a good person, but maybe in the eyes of other people, I'm not so, so much of a good person. But, I mean, I believe as long as I'm a good person by my standards that I am, but technically not by um, the rest of society. No. Well, let's put you girls through a quick test, okay? okay. The good person test. And... Because everyone, every person's standards vary on what good is, we're going to go to a higher authority. We're going to go to God's standard, moral perfection. Have you girls heard of the Ten Commandments? Yes. Yes. Okay. First one is, well, not the first in the Ten Commandments, but the first question is, have you girls ever lied before? Yes. That would be a lie if I said no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you, you said you'd be a liar if you said no. So... Girls, because you've lied, what are you? Exactly. Bad, not good. Oh, more specifically, a sinner. Uh, someone who lies would be a liar. There you go. Okay. Very good. Next one. Okay. Uh, have either of you girls ever stolen anything, regardless of value, even something small like a diamond ring? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't believe you. You said you're a liar. <laughs> no, even something small like. Uh, Maybe you illegally downloaded music or movies off the internet or, or, or slacked off at work or something. I, I mean, I'm sure I have maybe like a little thing, probably. I don't... I steal my sister's clothes, I guess that counts. Oh. Like, still, I return them eventually, but it's still asking, taking without permission, so by definition, it's stealing. Okay. <laughs> okay, so next one. Have either of you girls ever used God's name as a curse word or used his name in vain? The names God, Jesus, or Christ? Yes. Yes. That one is called blasphemy. That one's very serious in God's eyes. You know, there's no one in the history of mankind who has ever had their name used like a curse word except for God and Jesus. 
last one, and this one's the, the biggie, okay? Uh, the Bible says, uh, do, not, uh, do not murder, do not kill. But it also t- takes it a step further. It says that if you just hate someone, or you're angry with someone, then you have committed murder in your heart. God considers it the same act. So, have either of you girls ever done that before? Hated someone, spoken angrily about someone, or murdered someone? Hopefully not that one. <laughs> well, I've never murdered anybody, but I have been angry or not nice feelings about somebody. So, Yeah, yeah I've never murdered anyone before. Um, but yeah, I've been angry at some people. So, yeah. so let's tally up the score. Girls, Jayla, Brittany, you've admitted to me that you're lying thieving, blasphemous, murderers at heart. So by God's standard, you're not good people. You're like the rest of us. Okay? So now, the big question is, if God were to judge you based on the Ten Commandments, based on that standard, do you think you would be innocent or guilty? Guilty for sure. Yeah, guilty. Knowing that you would be guilty, do you think God should send you to heaven or to hell? I think I should still go to heaven because um, th- from my belief, day-to-day basis, I try to live out like being um, a good person. And I don't, I feel like it's just humankind to, like, I'm, I'm sure no one has ever said, oh, I've never been angry at someone before. So I feel like it's the effort that counts. Like, if I'm trying to be a good person, if I'm trying to live by those morals, then, yeah, I should go to heaven. Before I get to you, uh, the Bible says that if you've broken even one law, you're guilty of it all. No matter if you're doing good things later on, you've still broken the law, so you're still guilty. Okay, what about you, Brittany? Um, I agree with Jayla. Nobody's perfect. I'm sure everybody has done at least one of those things. So, I mean, as long as you're not doing it in a way that, like, murdering somebody, or if you can learn how to... Um, learn from that or like your mistake and maybe change your ways to be better so will that get you to heaven or will you go to hell heaven so let me tell you what the bible says revelation 21 8 all liars and murderers will have their part in the lake which burns with fire and sulfur that's the second death it also says no thieves will inherit the kingdom of god uh, and in Exodus, it says that uh, God will not hold you guiltless for taking his name in vain, for blaspheming. So based on the Bible, it says that you girls are destined to go to hell when you die. Does that concern you? I mean, I guess it does a little bit, but I feel like forgiveness is a good thing. <laughs> I mean, um, I don't know. Okay. What about you? Um, I am not scared to go to hell because I still believe that I'm going to go to heaven because I feel like God is a very forgiving person. I mean, he would he would want us to be forgiving, so he has to be forgiving in a way too. So, I mean, I know I'm going to heaven because I'm a good, I by my definition of a good person, I'm a good person and I know like... Remember, we're not going by your definition of a good person. We're going by God's definition. And he says you're not good. In fact, the Bible says there are none good. None. So are we all going to hell then? That's a good question. Well, you girls have failed the good person test just like I have and just like everyone else I've ever interviewed has. So what do you think? Um, Like I said before, I feel like like God is very forgiving. I'm not Catholic, but I know I went to a Catholic high school and they go to what is it called? Confession. Yeah. And confess and basically I mean it's that is no justification to still like act wrongly, but it's it's an I personally feel like it is inevitable. Like there's bad in our society and unfortunately like as much as we try to fix it and try to get rid of it as much as we try to get rid of crime as much as we try to get rid of um all that bad stuff that it's it's technically not going to go away but if like you are living to the best of your ability like god will acknowledge that that's what you're doing if you're trying to reach and trying to live for what if you are 
religious, if you're if you look up to God and if you believe in him and you're trying to um, live as he would like you to live and you're trying to the best of your ability that he will acknowledge that and, you know, make a way, make a space for you up there, save you a seat, you know. Well, let me tell you, uh, unfortunately, that's not what the Bible teaches. That's not uh, the Bible says there, there's nothing that you can do to save yourself from going to hell. Um, and it does say that we're all destined to go there. But there is something that God did so that we could escape hell and go to heaven. Do you girls know what that is? Let me, let me go to you first. I don't. What about you? He died on the cross for our sins. Right. Jesus Christ. He, he came to this earth. He was God in the flesh. He lived a perfect life, a sinless life. Never lied, stole, used God's name in vain, none of that. And then he died on the cross and rose on the third day. Now, the reason he had to do that was because you're guilty and I'm guilty. We're all guilty, but he was innocent. What he was doing on that cross was he was taking your place. He was paying your fine. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. He was paying your wages with his death. And he says that if you repent, turn away from sin, and put your trust in Jesus Christ alone, you can be saved. You can escape hell. But that's the only way. Jesus said, I'm the, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father, or no one gets into heaven, except through me. So that's the only way. You know, don't trust in your own good works to get you to heaven. They're like filthy rags, according to the Bible, in God's eyes. Uh, nothing you do will merit you eternal life. It's only what Jesus did on the cross. And if you're not trusting fully, completely, in Jesus Christ, when you die, you will go to hell. And that concerns me very much. Because I don't want anyone to go to hell. You know, that's why I'm out here, because God saved me, and he can save anybody. If they're willing to, to bow the knee, to humble themselves, to turn away from their sins, and to put their trust in Jesus Christ alone. That's the only way to be saved. Okay? So, girls, does that make any sense to you at all? Yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. It does. Uh, real quick, when are you girls uh, going to die? I don't know. Whenever my time comes, I'm not afraid to die. I mean, I've, I've accepted God into my life at a very young age. So, I mean, I'm not afraid to die, not afraid of death. So, I mean, yeah, I'm not necessarily afraid of death. I mean, nobody knows when something's going to happen. Exactly. No one knows when we're going to die. It could be today. Okay, so I want to encourage you girls to get right with God. Make sure, you know, uh, like the Bible says, examine yourself. Make sure that you're in the faith, Jayla. Okay? Test your test your own faith. Make sure that you're lining up with what God's Word says, the Bible. And Brittany, I do encourage you to, to take that step. Read the Bible for yourself. See what it says. Don't believe me because I have a microphone, okay? Um, but examine the Scriptures and, and see if what they say is true, okay? Get right with God right away before it's too late because you don't know when you're going to die. You're listening to When There's No Radio. 2 Timothy 3 states, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So I encourage you to read the Bible daily and believe it because it's the instruction manual for life. Do you want more information about our origins and to learn how to defend the Christian faith? Then visit our friends at LetCreationSing.org as well as AnswersInGenesis.org to be thoroughly equipped. Until next time, the fields are ripe for the harvest. So what are you waiting for? Get out there and share your faith. May God bless you.
Witness Radio has been brought to you by the Muniac family.